Hi there, you are watching a video of piping systems in industrial plants. The first question that needs to be addressed is, do piping systems fail under external pressure? After watching this image, it is clear that a piping system do fail due to external pressure if it is not adequately designed. A pipe might be subjected to external pressure for different reasons. It might be the case that a pipe is submerged in some fluid or that vacuum is simply produced inside, as is the case with the image shown on the screen. Next, we will see a video of a pressure vessel under external pressure where this type of failure is more common than in pipes. The failure mechanism and calculation procedure is the same in both cases. The mechanism of external pressure failure is different than the mechanism of internal pressure failure. Thus, different methods are required to design piping systems to handle safely these different mechanisms. Internal pressure failure can be understood as a pipe failing after stresses in a part or a large portion exceed the material strength. In contrast, during external pressure failure, the pipe can no longer support its shape and suddenly, irreversibly, takes on a new lower volume. Note that the word verification has been used in the title, wall verification process. It means that, unlike pipes which are designed for internal pressure, there is no single formula or unique design which fits the external pressure condition. This calculation of this process is iterative. In this case, the thickness of the pipe is only one part of the design. All the factors which affect the design are the length between lines of support, the use, size and spacing of siphon rings. The B31 code does not include a verification method for these cases. The different sections indicate the following. B31-1 and B31-3 indicates to follow the ASME code Section 8, Division 1, uh, Sections UG28 to UG30, whilst B31-4 and ASME B31-8 do not indicate a specific verification method. Nevertheless, it is usual to follow the pressure vessel code, the ASME 8 Division 1, part UG28 to UG30. Shell thickness verification method according to the ASME code section 8 Division 1, paragraph UG28, is long and repetitive. The first step is to estimate a shell thickness that would bear the external load, according to the vessel diameter and support line's distance, of course. Next, the geometric radius of the vessel must be obtained in order to be able to work with the corresponding charts and therefore obtain coefficients A and B. Once we obtain those coefficients, we are in a position to determine the allowable external pressure. In other words, the amount of external pressure that the vessel can resist. When vessels are designed for both internal and external pressure, it is common practice to first obtain the shell thickness required for the internal pressure condition and then check that that thickness for the maximum allowable external pressure. In a piping system under external pressure, support lines are the parts of the system counteracting the actions of the external pressure. 
depending on the geometry and moment of inertia of the system, this means the different elements of the system, of course, supports, flanges, etc., these lines will be located in different places. On the screen it can be seen the chart for selection of the factor A. This chart is included in the ASMI code part 2, subsection 3. Same as before, this is the chart for selection of the factor B, also included in the ASMI code. As you can see, the design process is not straightforward, just the opposite. If the amount of external pressure that the vessel can bear is lower than the actual external pressure, the thickness of the vessel has to be increased or the geometry of the vessel changed. Obviously, the diameter and length of the vessel cannot be changed, but the distance between lines of supports can be changed. Increasing the shell thickness to withstand external pressure requirements won't be always economical. External or internal stiffening rings constitute a very good alternative for the vessel to withstand the external pressure requirements. Shortening the distance between support lines makes the vessel shell more stable. The simply supported beam is shorter this way, thus more resistant to external loads. With the introduction of stiffeners, another verification method must be followed. Stiffeners verification process is the reverse of the one seen for the shell. It starts calculating the B factor, therefore to obtain factor A from the corresponding table. Ultimately, this method will allow us to compare the moment of inertia required with the moment of inertia available. If the available inertia in the vessel is not enough, bigger and or more stiffeners shall be adopted. As mentioned before, design of stiffeners themselves is a trial and error procedure. So, where to start? How many stiffeners to add? Well, something to bear in mind is the distance between stiffeners. Even when the size of the stiffener rings have been estimated, where should they be placed. For this particular exercise, please see the study notes. Or, for example, the shape of the stiffener. If possible, standard profiles should be used. They are generally cheaper and the manufacturing process require a lot less man hours. And at last, the position of stiffeners is very important. Locating rings over circumferential weld seams shall be avoided when possible. As a conclusion, it is important to mention the following. When vessels are designed for both internal and external pressure, it is common practice to first obtain the shell thickness required for the internal pressure condition, and then check that thickness for the maximum allowable external pressure. If the design is not adequate, then a decision is made to either increase the shell thickness to the next commercial plate thickness available, or add stiffening rings to reduce the L dimension, distance between support lines. It is worth mentioning that neither increasing the shell thickness to remove stiffening rings, nor using the thinnest shell with the maximum number of stiffening rings is economical. The optimum solution lies somewhere between these two extremes.